Are you finding yourself overwhelmed by all the different types of sequence based bioinformatic files? FASTA, FASTAQ, BET, SAM, BY. Today we will shed some light on this complexity and by the end of the video you'll know what all these files are and how to use them effectively in your research projects. For this I will guide you through all the steps you need to answer the very simple yet fundamental question which are the genes present in my experimental data. For example is my gene of interest present in my RNA-seq data, chip-seq data or any other SEC experiment? So let me start by introducing the four categories of bioinformatics files to deal with genomic data. If you have a complete understanding of all these four categories, you should be good to go, you can stop the video and move on. If these categories, however, are unclear now, don't worry, we'll explain each of them in detail in this video and I will give you the four most commonly used file types to complete most genomic projects. The first category are the sequencing files. These are the building blocks of any genomic analysis. We are talking about FASTA, FASTAQ files. This format primarily contains sequences with some metadata and we'll go into what makes them different. The second category are the mapping files. These include files like SAM, and bed. Unlike sequence-based files, these files involve maps of data where your DNA or RNA sequences align to a reference sequence. Our third category are the reference files like FASTA and BET, which have been typically curated and are used as standards. You typically download the files from trusted websites like Ensemble or NCBI. And finally, for our fourth category, we have the experimental files such as the FASTQ, which are sequencing files that come with quality score, and the SAM files that are map files that include discrepancies between the raw data reads and the target references sequence to which they have been mapped. This file you generate in the lab where you can get them from previously published research. Actually, we can make the classification of these most common files using a double entry table where we have the different categories and a representative file for each category in the intersection. Do you believe we are missing an important file class? Please let me know in the comments below. Hey, if you are finding this content viable and think this is relevant to your research, I got a quick favor to ask. Go ahead and hit subscribe. Thanks with that out of the way, let's go back to the bioinformatic file types. Okay, let's start with what you typically get from your sequences, the FASTQ file. If you are conducting RNA-seq to explore the transcriptome or chip-seq to understand where the proteins bind to the genome, what you get initially is raw data in FASTQ in FASTQ format. But why FASTQ? Well, sequencing isn't perfect, it comes with errors. So in addition to the nucleotide sequence, FASTQ files also contain a quality score for each base, hence the Q. These scores give you the confidence level for each base, letting you assess the reliability of your data. Each read is written in four lines. The first one, starting with the add symbol, is the name of the read. The second is the sequence itself. The third is a plus sign, typically followed by the sequence again and the fourth are the different scores for each base, each symbol representing a different score. One of the most common tasks performed on FASTQ files is the mapping of the sequences. Essentially, you are figuring out where these sequences are coming from in the genome they belong. And this is where FASTA files come into play. Unlike FASTQ, FASTA files are more straightforward. They contain mostly curated sequences, like a reference genome where the confidence of each nucleotide has already been established. Each sequence in the file is represented by two rows. In the first one, you have the arrow followed by the name of the sequence. And in the second one, you have the sequence itself. The ends here are just the unknown start of the chromosome. So what you generally do is map your raw FASTQ sequences to the known and well-established genomic sequences, which are often in FASTA format. The result, you guess it, a mapping file. The go-to format for map sequences is SAM files, which stands for Sequence Alignment Map. A SAM file represents the mapping coordinates of your raw query sequence against the target reference sequence. It also contains a section, referred as the cigar, that highlights any differences or gaps or mismatches between your target and your query. As you can see, SAM files offer a readable representation of the mapping. You can also compress the SAM files 
and that brings us to the BAM files, short for Binary Alignment Map. Uh, that is a compressed version of the SAM files. If you try to open BAM files, however, you just find gibberish because these are binary files. Now, how can we know that these map sequences overlap with regions in the genome encoding for our genes? interest. For that you'll need an annotation file. This is where BET files come into play. BET stands for Browser Extensible Data and this file format perfectly matches up with your genomic references, helping you understand how your sequences align with particular genes or other genomic features. In this case, you have each annotated feature in one row, uh, starting with the chromosome, the start position and end position in nucleotides, the name of the feature, the strand, followed by other parameters. Once you get your annotated files, and your sign files with mat reads, it's important to see how these align with your genome visually to double check that your data makes sense. For that, you will need a genome browser. This tool allows you to see the map reads alongside annotated regions like genes, exons, and intros. However, before that, there is one extra step you'll need to take. Some files can be massive and it will take forever for the browser to go through the entire file to find the reads specific in your area of interest. The solution, SAM index files or sci-fi. These are essentially shortcut files that help your browser quickly locate reads in your large SAM file. Think of them as a dictionary of sorts. So before jumping into a genome browser, make sure to generate the corresponding SAM files, otherwise the genome browser will not even try to open it. And that wraps up our overview of the types of nucleic sequence file formats and how to use them effectively. All right, we've gone through various file types for genome analysis from FASTA and FASTQ to SAM, BAM, BED files, and even we touch on the index files for efficient genome browsing. Now I know you are thinking, how do we transition from one file to the next? What tools do we use and what are the best practices? I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below which of these steps you would like to dive into in more detail. Your input will be guiding the future videos. And if you are keen to learn more about my informatic pipelines, make sure to check the playlist on screen right now. It's a comprehensive tutorial series on SnakeMake, a powerful bioinformatic workflow manager. 